Okay, welcome to week four of the course here. I'm going to introduce material out of chapter two of the Excel section, and I'm going to try and go pretty rapidly here. So stick with me. You can always uh, review this a second time or a third time if you need to. All right, so first part of chapter introduces some very, very simple aggregate functions. When I say aggregate, these are basic statistical functions. Uh, they're max, min, average, count, and sum. So let me use a couple of these as examples. I have a block of numbers here, a range of numbers, and I want to find a maximum value in that. So I always start a function with equals, and then a function name, max, and then I go over and I select the block of cells that I want to find a maximum value of. And there we go, simple, and it comes out 17. All right, so let me use my fill handle here. And so now here I have a function built that figures out the max at each of these different levels. Now, I'm gonna use some editing here. I have one little error right away, because my block of cells, my range of cells goes from A1 to A6. And then you notice as I use the fill handle, it increments as a relative reference here. It goes A2, A7, A3, A8, A4, A9, you know, et cetera. So that's incorrect. So let me do this. Let's see, I wanna introduce again the idea of absolute values versus relative values. And I'm gonna change these so they never change. We're always dealing with this range of cells A1 through A6. And I do that by putting dollar signs in each one. That's F4 on my keyboard. All right, now I have absolute range of cells. All right, I'll go ahead and fill down again. I'm gonna get the same result, but notice how it doesn't change in each of these. All right, so let me go in here and I'll quickly edit. I'm going to change this now from max, I'm going to change that to min. Of course, minimum is 1. Average, count, count gives me the number of values in the, in the range of cells, and then sum, and sum's going to be if I add them all up. There you go. So there are my different aggregate functions. Next, vertical lookup. Vertical lookup provides a way to take a number and then correlate it through a range of cells. All right, so my example here, I have a really, really short grade book where I have two students, Jane Doe, John, John Doe. Jane's got a 90 average, John's got a 50 average. And in my grade book range here, and I always start from zero and work my way up, from zero to 59 is gonna be an F, from 60 to 69 is going to be a D, and notice how it increments all the way up to an A. Okay, so here's how we use it. We say equals, and we use the VLOOKUP, and one of the things, again, I really like about Excel, and I am a Google Docs user. Most of my work right now is being done in Google Docs, except for if I need some serious uh, modeling tools, then uh, Excel is definitely superior. So I use a vertical lookup feature, put my parentheses and then look at this information it gives me. It really makes it easy for me to, to uh, build my function here. Okay, so first the lookup value. Where's the lookup value? Well, right here it is, it's 90. And then my array is next, my table array. In other words, what, where is an array is a series of cells. Where is the table that we're gonna look it up? And so I select just the table. And I select both the range and the grade in that table, all right? And then lastly, it's going to ask me for my column index number. And really what it's saying is, it, is the, the value we want to display, is it found in column 1 or column 2? Let me put it in column 2 here. Okay, notice that it came up with what it's supposed to, an A. All right, let's see if I select a column 1. Well, it's going to come up with the same thing, isn't it? It's going to come up with this one right here. Or if I change the grade here, let me change it to an 89. And notice now it's reading from column one over here, which is 80. All right, put back a 90. Let's finish our function here. Now if I, if I take this and I copy this down using the fill handle, notice how I get an NA here or value not available. All right, and what's taking place here is when I went from here from cell C2 and filled down to cell C3, notice how it moved my table, okay? So easy way to fix this. Go back up here, edit it, and again, absolute values. Absolute, whoops, F4, absolute. This one, by the way, I wanna leave relative, don't I? Because I want that to increment from here down to here. And then, of course, I wanna use the second column. All right, so there's my A, and then if I did this properly when I 
fill down here shows me my F. All right, so there's vertical lookup. Lastly, we'll look at some financial functions here. So one of the greatest lessons to learn in a capitalistic society is the lesson of compound interest. And I'll do that here, and I'm gonna teach you a function called the PMT function. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and borrow, say, $100,000, all right? At an interest rate of, what's the interest rate today? Let's say around 4.5%. All right, and that's the annual interest rate. For a term, well, usually most mortgages are around 30 years. So borrow for a 30-year term, all right? Notice I have those document here. Is my term is in years, my interest rate is annual, all right? Interest for most mortgages, calculate it monthly, okay? So we need to make little modifications as we go through and use our PMT function. So let me do that, all right? So first I say equal, and my PMT function Parentheses. Now note I'm getting all this help again from Microsoft Excel. It's going to tell me a rate, it's going to tell me a period, and then my principal value. So my rate's going to be found right up here. I take my rate, now I recognize we're, we do monthly payments, and so our compound, our interest is compounded monthly, and so my interest rate I have here is annual. So I have to take the interest rate and come up with a monthly interest rate. How do I do that? Well, annual is 4.5, so I take Whatever's in cell B2, which currently is 4.5, divided by 12, comma. Next thing I need to do is figure out my period or my term, okay? So my term I'm borrowing for is 30 years. But again, recognize that we're doing monthly payments. So I'm gonna have 12 payments for 30 years. I need to multiply this by 12. Again, it's converting it to a monthly payment, All right? And then lastly, I need to give it at my principal value or how much am I borrowing? So I'll put that in there, that's found in B1, all right? Now, whoops. All right, so I'll go ahead, I, I have my formula bill, I'll go ahead and hit enter, and you can see I've, I've got a value for it, but notice it turns up in red. And typically what we wanna do is we wanna show a positive number. Red means it's a negative number, and there's a number of ways I can go ahead and format and change that. But what I like to do here, and you'll find these examples in your book, when you figure PMT, we don't know what our monthly payment is. So, so we're not, because we could use this to show an investment, but we're actually borrowing money here. So when we borrow money, we'll say, well, our principal is actually negative here. So I'll go ahead and put that in there, and my monthly payment shows up as 506.69.